Jawan is a fearless film. Its most memorable sequence has Shah Rukh Khan delivering a monologue that exhorts us to infuse rigor into our democracy. His name here, not accidentally, is Azad. He looks into the camera and asks us to be better citizens by questioning those who come seeking votes. We must, Azad says, ignore Jat Pat Dharam. We can, he insists, change our country by exercising the might of our finger. There is such urgency and such emotion in Shah Rukh's voice that even if at the end of it he had declared that he's standing for elections, I would have cheered. This is one of India's most beloved citizens insisting that we do better. It hits hard. But this fearlessness also extends to all other aspects of the film. Writer-director Attlee is a maker of blockbusters. His creative mantra seems to be, more is more. Jawan is his fifth film and he weaves in all the ingredients that he's celebrated for. Superheroic leading men, the recurring theme of justice, furious action sequences, song sequences with dozens of background dancers, jaw-dropping scale and excessive slow motion. This is not a filmmaker afraid of muchness. His films have so much plot that they could be turned into a series and still there would be some story left over. Jawan features a love story. This sort of arranged marriage, memory loss, vigilante justice, farmer suicides, faulty weaponry that results in death on the battlefield, ghastly government hospitals, a special ops unit, chemical poisoning by greedy corporates, and I am still forgetting a few elements, I'm sure. Atlee's heroes perform so many tasks that he often needs to divide them into more than one character. Vijay played three roles in Mersal and two in Bigel. In Jawan also, Shah Rukh has many avatars, and he nails them all. Shah Rukh Khan as an action hero is a thing of beauty. He inflicts and endures violence with panache. One version of him smokes a cigar while casually taking out the baddies. Another has his hands tied, but he grabs this large knife in his mouth and stabs a man in his leg. Atli and the brilliant composer Anirudh Ravichandar designed several whistle-worthy moments underlined by thumping BGM, which are only placed there so that we can soak in the charisma of an actor who's entertained us for 31 years. Atli is a master of fan service, and here he doesn't hold back. Shah Rukh fights, weeps, sings, dances, and of course, romances. Two ethereal women, Nantara and Deepika Padukone. The film also leans into the singular relationship that Shah Rukh has with women. This bond is so strong that there's a book written on it, Desperately Seeking Shah Rukh by Sharanya Bhattacharya. Jawan has one of the Shah Rukh characters leading a posse of women, which includes Sanya Malhotra and Priyamani. Azad is raised by a single mother and surrounded by hundreds of women. Women enable him through the film, and there's even a sequence in which Shah Rukh and Nantara get into hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's pretty sexy. But the film reneges on its own promise because when the battle of good versus evil finally reaches its climax, the women aren't able to participate. Eventually, only men decide the fate of the world. These men include Vijay Setupati playing Kali Gayakwad, a man who describes himself as the fourth largest weapons dealer in the world. I love that detail. Vijay has played some incredible bad guys, including Sandhanam in Vikram, Bhavani in Master, and Veda in Vikram Veda. He has the ability to make routine scenes memorable, but Kali isn't written with enough care. He has this young daughter who he obviously loves, but then she disappears early in the film. Kali also prefers his henchmen to come in varying sizes. So one of them is this giant and the other is vertically challenged. This role is played by Jafar Sadek, who was so venomous in Vikram, but is largely wasted here. Along with weapons, these men carry Kali's case of red and blue pills. I'm guessing Atli is a fan of the Matrix. But none of these traits make Kali formidable enough to go up against all those Shah Rukhs. The writing is too broad, and as I said before, fearless, but not always in a good way. Atli takes the plot to preposterous heights. The larger ambition seems to be creating jaw-dropping set pieces rather than telling a coherent story. The connective tissue between these set pieces is alarmingly thin. Atlee's signature is the flashback, which is where he usually dials up the emotions. 
In this film, too, the extended backstory has dramatic heft, but the impact doesn't hold long enough. In several sequences, the film's editor Ruben cuts to characters wiping tears, but we don't feel as much as they're feeling. In places, the film defies logic at a fast and furious level. And there just aren't enough punchy dialogues, though that line, Bete ko hat lagane se pehle baap se baat kar, deserves an award for audacity and subtext. Jawan runs for 170 minutes, and the incessant sound and fury becomes exhausting. But Shah Rukh, especially the older version, keeps the film from becoming a slog. With graying hair and a cigar, he summons a formidable swagger. That's the good news. He's only going to get better. You can watch Jawan at a theatre near you. Tell me what you thought of Jawan in the comments below and do subscribe to Reviews and More.